today I am going to give the presentation that um, I will be giving, oops, uh, there, that I, a few different um, R user groups have asked me to do these. And so um, I have this presentation ready, assuming that I, let's see, can make it full screen. Um, so figured why not give it to all of us? So um, I want to do, let's do that view. Hopefully this will work. Okay. And of course, every time I get my windows all how I want them, and then I present and Zoom says, oh, well, you don't want your windows that way anymore, do you? Yes, it does. Yes, I do. So, okay. Uh, okay. So, I, um, it's funny because this isn't in uh, our markdown, despite how I do all the book clubs. Um, I'm going to have to update this deck at some point and make it the same style as all of our book downs, I think. Um, some parts of this deck won't be relevant to us because you already know what the R4DS online learning community is, obviously, but I'll... Uh, I'll skip through those parts. Uh, this deck is available at r4ds.io slash club deck. So if you want to follow along or if you want to um, load it later and like pretty much everything in the deck is a link to a book or a channel. So um, you can use that. So John, if you yeah. are going over just like tidbits of cool information on the R4DS book club, would you mind not skipping those? <laughs> just going through? Yeah, we, we'll make the calls as I get to Got different it. screens. So we'll see okay. what, what is relevant here, or what you already know. Um, so, all right. So R4DS, I don't know, as you all may or may not know, um, we were founded in 2017 as an R4DS book club. Um, I joined in uh, early 2018, I think, um, and we started to transition into this more general kind of R help site. Um, we currently have, uh, last I checked, about 12,000 members. We get, um, I'm not sure, probably, it depends on, we get bursts of getting new members. Um, they listed us on Google's certification for, um, our programming and so we got a big influx then and every time they like a new cohort of that starts we get a big influx um but in general we have about 600 active members every week uh not always the same members but around 600 and you know it's 100 percent volunteer uh, everyone who is answering questions is just doing that on their own time um as we've discussed in here, one of the things that r for ds does is the Tidy Tuesday project, mostly on Twitter. Um, we have our help on Slack, and then we have book clubs, and uh, that's what I'm going to focus on today. All right. Um, so we do have a code of conduct. Conduct. Every, I'd like to bring this up every once in a while, especially in talks like this. If you're going to be joining, the main idea being that um, we want to foster an open and welcoming environment. So like, um, please try to help um, make our community harassment free uh, for everyone. And there are details at r4ds.io slash conduct. If anything ever happens, like I think once or twice ever, I've had to deal with a member, which is a pretty amazing fact out of 12,000 members. Uh, but, you know, let me know, contact me on Slack, con you can email um whatever it's very like the our community is so great about being welcoming at least like <laughs> our segment of the art community is um and i want to keep it that way and that sounded funny because i'm saying our segment but i mean the nice part not the <laughs> not some certain um subgroup or whatever all right uh so you know you've seen the slack we've got lots of different channels um we have a few uncategorized things we have all the help channels we have book clubs. We have a lot of chats now, actually. That's become more of a thing. We have some projects that sometimes are active. Um, but yeah, again, today I'm going to focus on those book clubs. Oh, and I need to update the slides because I actually archived a channel between making this slide and making this slide, or the other way around. Anyway, um, so yeah, so we've got, uh, nine, I think, 19 book club channels. That changes all the time, too. So. Uh, this number might be inaccurate by the time you look at the Slack. 
All right, so what are the book clubs? Um, we restarted those in April of 2020. Uh, I think you know the timing might be obvious why that happened, but a lot of people were sitting at home and had um, bookshelves like um, you may or may not be able to see behind me where I buy our books and I read parts of them and then never quite make it all the way through until we started doing the book clubs. And it has been really effective to actually learn uh, really, you know, deeply get into a lot of these activities. Um, as you know, we do weekly one hour Zooms. We usually do a chapter a week. Um, I'm not going to load the sample notes because it actually, I can't remember which th that link goes to. It could be one of ours. Um, you know the general idea of how we do these. All right. And what have we read? All right. So we've read mostly our related books. I think I've got, yeah, a little edit there because now we've got a Python book club. So um, data books. Uh, we also have had a couple of stats groups that aren't necessarily our focused. Um, it's just around stats in general. Uh, we have a rule that I have broken a few times and always regret it. Um, so it's a rule of the, the book has to be free online, like legally free online. Um, I don't want to have to deal with copyright lawsuits. It's especially ironic to do so because I work at an academic publisher. Um, just don't make don't make that happen. <laughs> so we do free online books. Um, I do I do like to make sure that they are free online so anyone can participate. And also there are a ton of free books online. Uh, that is kind of the way books get written um, in the R universe for the most part. So it doesn't hurt. Um, it, that doesn't really limit us that much. Um, we've had 36 cohorts, cohorts so far. That's probably inaccurate because this morning we started number 37. Um, we've done about 20 books. Oh, oh, sorry, my mouse keeps going crazy lately. So if anything like that happens, I'm sorry. Oops. Um, anyway, so we've done about 20 books. Um, and part of the reason that that's about is a couple of them haven't technically been books. They've been courses that have book-like formats online. Um, but yeah, about 20 books. And all of our meetings, except for the first like three from April 2020, are on our YouTube channel, r4ds.io slash YouTube. Those usually now go up within a day or two. Um, I was actually working this morning with uh, Kevin Kent, his, is trying to help me automate that. Um, and so they'll be going up Again, it's within a day or two, it's always going to require a human step because I don't want these things to automatically post to our YouTube channel and then find out that someone accidentally showed their credit card info or something, you know, so uh, they, it takes a day or two <laughs> for me to actually have a chance to look and make sure everything's okay. Uh, I highly re recommend that if there's a book that like we don't have active or even sometimes it'll be a book that we do have active like uh i'll be doing um i don't think i've done it for our 4 ds but whatever that we're doing some club and i'm going to do a presentation i'll go watch the past one and see what they talked about and what questions came up and maybe we can improve on the notes um things like that um youtube does uh allow you to play videos at up to 2x um and often when i'm trying to review a book club that's much better because you don't get the pauses and, oh, wait, what did I want to say? It'll just zip through. And if you're really crazy, um, you can search online and there are ways that you can actually make it play faster than 2x. I think it can go up to 64x, but at that point, it's totally incomprehensible. Um, you have to run JavaScript in the console and it's, it's actually, I've done it a few times not to watch it. Like it's incomprehensible much above 2x but uh it, it's funny to see some of the videos all right all right so what have we read um there's no formal order or requirements or anything like that like we're not an online university or anything but some books make sense uh before other books um ryan can probably speak to parts of this that uh you know we have this engineering pro production grade shiny apps um you can read that completely on its own. 
especially if you have experience with Shiny and or with our packages, but it's probably easier if you read the books, our packages and Mastering Shiny before you read that book. Um, likewise, pretty much every book is easier if you've read this one, R for Data Science, or there are a couple, like you could read, uh, I'll, I'll mention them as I go through, but there are a couple other books that can be starting points. Um, but yeah, so we've done this starting point. Now let's talk about where, where can you go from here? Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit. All right, any questions before I start diving into specific books? John, I had a general comment, if that's okay. Go for it. In relation to R4DS learning community, it is fairly tidy centric. So a lot of the books that are currently supporting the R language are tidy oriented. Is there other resources at our disposal that would be accessible that would be more base related? Um, I asked that question for a reason. Um, with this, this thought process of the entire learning community being tidy oriented, that comment of base R can be a little hard to bridge sometimes. Um, nothing that, so not per se. And the answer I'm gonna give is going to sound maybe crazy. <laughs> Advanced R, I think is a good place to learn base R. So the book Advanced R, which is written by Hadley um, and talks a lot like he has his package Rlang, which is a really advanced package. But to me, that is the time when you need base R is when you are working in advanced things. You don't need base R to do any of the basic things. Ironically, base R is for advanced things. And so he talks about the parts of base R that aren't covered by the tidyverse, basically, um, or that that are used to build the tidyverse. So, so obviously, you know, you can't build the tidyverse out of the tidyverse. Um, and so that's most of when I would worry about functions that aren't covered by tidy. Great comment. Uh, like that, that's a big, I don't know, that's an argument in the R world. There are people, basically there are people who learned base R first and they think it's easier because they learned it first, but it's not easier in my opinion. It's way easier to learn the tidyverse first and then fill in the holes with base functions um it's worthwhile to like really maybe go back and dig into like the iteration chapter in r for D ds which is all base r or mostly base r like the ifs and fours and whiles and all that um to really make sure you understand that once you've really been programming a bit um, but yeah, advanced R, that's where I would go. It would be nice to have probably like a data table book. Um, Data.table is kind of the alternative package to the tidyverse. It does a lot of the um, manipulation of data frames that the tidyverse is built around. And a lot of times it's faster, uh, but actually there's um, the package DT plier is a data table wrapper for the, the tidyverse. So you get the speed of data table, but the tidyverse ease of use. Um, so even then you don't really need to learn data table. Uh, yeah, so that's my thoughts on that. Is there anything uh, specific that you were wondering about or did that kind of cover it? No, it's a, it's a really good uh, <laughs> comment. No, you're, you're, you're definitely answering the question 100%. The, <laughs> the comment I'm driving towards is this like backstory concept or like the history of where we're at today. Like how did we get to where we're at right now? And the, the comprehension or as you become more confident and comfortable in tidyverse going back and learning that point in time where things started to shift and the reason why those shifts were occurring, that's always uh, rewarding in my <laughs> own thoughts anyway, but. Don't want to yeah, else. yeah, it depends what you're like trying to see. A lot of times I'll go through, like, uh, go through the history in a GitHub. I say a lot of times, I've done this a handful of times, but go through the history in a GitHub repo and try to find why, you know, like there's this weird thing in some function. Why does it work this way? And you can kind of dig through the closed pull requests or closed issues and search for that function, things like that. 
Um, or you can go to the function itself and, and kind of step backwards through time and see when they introduce this new thing. And sometimes that is really interesting. Like you'll find, oh yeah, in this weird case, this will break the, unless we do this special thing. Um, or sometimes it'll be, hey, I just found this cool way to do this thing and it cuts out three pages of code. So let's do this. Um, so yeah, if you want the history, uh, really kind of reading GitHub is my favorite way to find the history. All right, so moving on. All right, so starting point, R4DS. Um, like I said, this book that we've been reading, it's a good place to start learning. Um, it's my my favorite as far as a starting point. Um, but there are other ones. Uh, we actually have uh, one cohort has run through the Spanish translation of R for Data Science, um, R para Ciencia de Datos. Um, those videos are available. Uh, and you know, if you're ever interested, we could start another cohort of that. They actually also have their own GitHub repo, like actually that one predated this. So it, it's the different style. It's old, the different presentations, separate presentations that aren't rendered online, but still they have a repo that you can go through and it's all in Spanish. Uh, like I said, we just started practical Python programming. I mean, that's a starting point but there's no follow-up yet. <laughs> um, presumably there will be. Uh, we'll probably do more advanced Python topics, but um, that wouldn't get you into any of the other R books. And then the other one that I haven't actually read, but it is written as a starting point is uh, technically the title is Statistical Inference via Data Science, um, but it's known as Modern Dive because that's in the subtitle and that's the URL. It's a book written um, it's a statistics book in R. So it's here's how to do statistics and here's the R code to do that statistics. It's more focused on the stat side than on the R side. Um, but yeah, that one's uh, a good, another good starting point. It gets you like, gets your feet wet in how to use R, how to write in R. Yeah, and I also, I went through that entire book and yeah, it's pretty good and pretty helpful. And yeah, it does get your feet wet into our programming. Excellent. Yeah, that one's on my list uh, because my stats, despite all the, like I can program in R, but my stats is pretty weak. I took stats, I don't even know, 30 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. So um, yeah. All right, so from there, um, I'm gonna talk about like a lot of different areas now of different books. Um, the next major area that people are often interested in is modeling. Um, we've talked a little bit about these books, I think in this club, but just to kind of walk through what all of them are. Tidy Modeling with R is uh, a brand new book. It's actually about to be published. They're doing some final wrapping up to um, make the print version, but it has a cover now. That's exciting. Um, it is, so tidy, the tidy models framework is a um, set of packages that are built to bring, you know, like we just learned about all the data wrangling stuff in the tidyverse and all of like, that's a big wide area. And then there was a little teeny, teeny piece that was about modeling in R4DS. Tidy models is like take that little teeny 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 piece and make it a whole universe of packages, um, and it's a framework that helps you. Uh, like they they use this philosophy called the pit of success. That if you just use all the defaults, or if you like screw up a little bit, you'll succeed. But if you want to really go off and do more um, specialized things, that's where you have to learn the non defaults and learn how to set things up. So I, I really like that philosophy. I think it's a really useful way to write anything. I've actually been bringing it up at work because it's a really good way to do things. Um, but so the big asterisk on this is that book teaches you how to like program models or how to how to write your code that works with models. It doesn't really talk about like what is the difference between a random forest and a boosted tree or a uh, linear model or all the different types of modeling. Um, 
So that's where an introduction to statistical learning comes in. This is the ISLR is what it's known as because uh, the piece that's not shown there is with R. So an introduction to statistical learning with R. This just came out second edition. And we also just put up the pool this morning for a fifth cohort for that book. It is a very good book to walk you through all the different types of um, modeling. I would say, I don't know, I'm torn, but I think probably ISLR before tidy models is the way to go so that you know all the types of modeling. Implementing the models, you can just follow along with the code that's in the book and it's not the best way to implement them. Tidy models takes care of that, but it shows you like, it, it lets you get, understand all the different types of models. Um, that said, I actually did tidy modeling with R before ISLR. Uh, I don't know, I might actually end up reading, like doing multiple book clubs of both of those to really understand <laughs> the pieces because they're both very complex topics. I'm not sure yet. Um, highly recommend both books. Uh, the next one that we're starting any day now, I think probably around the time that the GG Plot 2 club is done um, because uh, Priyanka wanted to facilitate a group doing feature engineering and selection. Um, that's by uh, Max Kuhn of the Tidy Models framework and uh, Kiel Johnson. It's an older book. Um, actually, I think they just had an edition a couple years ago, so it's not that old. It's all about like, it's kind of the bridge between um, R for DS, like R for data science and modeling. It's all those, like we did a little bit of it in the modeling chapter of R for DS where you're trying to figure out, um, okay, I've got a date, but that date could be a weekend and it could be a holiday. And so all these things that you have to kind of manually do to data to make it ready for modeling, that's what this book is about. So things to keep in mind. Um, I haven't read it yet, so I can't give you much more than that, but it's a, a way to, like it's a a way to get more out of your data. Um, if you're doing a lot of modeling, feature engineering and selection is a good one to do. And then I listed a couple more here because I just learned that they are free online. Um, Manning Press has free editions of all their books now. I don't think they used to. Um, and I've had a couple of these. And again, I've read pieces of them. I have not read them cover to cover. So having a book club to do uh, the deep or the dive all the way through would be nice. Human in the loop machine learning is just, it's a um, useful topic for me. It's where you're building um, machine learning models to help with some task that people are doing. And um, it's like bringing, it's efficiently working with the people in the models to improve the models. So, okay, we need humans to still label these things because the model's not sure about them. And how do you choose which things are best for the humans to label? Um, to build, to make the model better. So that's that's one book that I um, probably will start a club for one of these days. And then Deep Learning with R. Um, oh, sorry, that one's by uh, Robert Monarch. And Deep Learning with R is by uh, Francois Cholet from Google and JJ Allaire from R Studio. So it's like uh, the best people to teach you. It's like Deep Learning side, Francois Cholet wrote Keras. He wrote, he like, um, helped create the modern deep learning movement. And then JJ Allaire uh, founded our studio. So he's, you know, a big uh, person in the R universe. So them together, it's a good book. Um, again, I've read parts of it. Uh, I've been told about other parts. I've been demonstrated other parts of it, but one of these days I want to go through the whole book. Um, and thank you, Ryan. And yes, um, by the way, all of these are links. So um, if you go to uh, that link, um, r4ds.io slash uh, club, club slides, club deck, club deck. Um, all of these are links and you can go find the books. Sorry for spamming the uh, thread. Then. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No You've problem at all. <laughs> and I just noticed that uh, Shamsuddin is here. I, because I see you in the chat. Um, I So I, I, I agree, ISLR probably first, but um, 
it's also useful to understand tidy modeling with R and then go do ISLR and do the labs using tidy models. So I don't know, it can go back and forth. Uh, all right. Oh, sorry. Before I move on from there, any other questions about modeling in R and how to learn about it? Other books that you would recommend? All right. So the next category, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, oh, well, so I've got a whole text. I think I've got a whole text section in here, Jam. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so advanced R programming, I, I threw a couple of things in here that kind of go together. Um, advanced R, like I said earlier, it's like if you're doing a lot of actual programming in R, um, more than just data analysis, um, and even some data analysis, but if you're writing a lot of reused code, um, especially if you're writing code for other people, Advanced R talks a lot about like error handling and um, uh, efficiency. So making your code run a little better or making it uh, easier to, to expand. Um, so if you're writing basically the same function, but now you want it to work for uh, character strings instead of integers, or you want it to do different things if it's a character string versus an integer. Um, that's the object-oriented piece in Advanced R. Uh, and again, I say for other people, but if you're writing code that you're going to have to deal with in a year, that's a different person. And it's worth learning some of the advanced error handling techniques so that you can tell yourself what you meant by the code. Um, I. This was the first of the new book clubs. It's a really good book. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, and so as, uh, as far as going back to these, uh, Shamsuddin's asking, when is human in the loop machine learning book club starting? Uh, in the indefinite future. Um, <laughs> I want to read it, but uh, I just can't yet. Hold on a sec. Um, so I don't know yet, uh, but we will read it at some point. Same with deep learning and with R, same with the next cohort for um, small tar, supervised machine learning for text analysis in R. I'll be running a cohort for that eventually, but uh, Jonathan and I just were talking and we've decided we're not going to do a new book club after we finish ISLR for a little bit because we want to knock out some things at work. So I don't know. Um, that said, you know, this book club is wrapping up. I don't know what I'm doing next. I'll do something on Saturdays. I just, I don't know what yet. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so yeah, advanced R, uh, again, really useful. It, it goes through a lot of like the underlying, um, like how the tidyverse is written. And uh, it's, it's really nice. It, one thing that I really like about something like advanced R is when I don't understand why something isn't working, it makes it much more possible for me to debug it because I can look at the tidyverse code and understand what it's doing. And couldn't always do that before advanced R. Like there are some techniques they use in it, even um, like the object oriented, the S3 programming where you go into you see the definition of a function and it just says use method and the name of the function you're like okay what what is that well once you learn a little bit about the s3 framework you learn how to kind of follow that and dig in and see what's happening there so that's that's useful if you're working in r a lot um the other one that we just started a new cohort for uh our packages uh that is another book by hadley about um and actually uh jenny Bryan from our studio is a co-author on the second edition that they're working on right now. Um, it's about, uh, you know, wrapping your code up into a package. A lot of people think, well, you know, like the packages on CRAN, um, you know, the tidyverse and like advanced things are what our packages are. I, everything, literally everything I do at work, we wrap into a, a package just for us internally. Um, we like we do the analyses as a uh, R markdown inside of that package, a vignette in the package, and then we write functions as we need them. 
um, because it makes it easier to share things. And so I'm a big, big, big fan of our packages. Um, I think it's super useful to learn if you're doing anything with um, more than just you, basically. Um, and I, I had to pause because I think even if I were working alone, I would probably be writing things in our packages because it just helps me keep track of everything. Um, other ones, so there, I have this book uh, back here somewhere, Efficient R Programming. I don't know, it's on the shelf right there um, that I've had for a while. Uh, there we go. Um, and I've, again, I've gone through it, I've used it, but I haven't read it cover to cover. Uh, it's got a question mark because uh, it's a few years old now. And um, as far as I know, they don't plan to do a new edition. And so there are parts of it that we'd have to kind of fix ourselves. Um, but I don't know, that might be it's, it is an advanced book, so it might be useful for an advanced book club to kind of note the parts of it that are now outdated. Um, it was written uh, for R3.5, 3.4, somewhere in there. And there were some big things that happened in 3.6. So um, anyway, and so, and also I'm looking for more suggestions along advanced R because or for advanced R programming, because this is an area that I'm super interested in. So um, if there are other books about kind of general practices, um, we would be glad to add them um, as more cohorts. All right, so the next area uh, is Shiny. Um, Ryan is very familiar with this and uh, Lucy is becoming familiar with this area because we just launched a new Mastering Shiny book club this morning. Um, that's the third cohort. Um, the first cohort was while the book was under very active development. And so if you look at the old videos, they're out of order basically because the chapters moved around. Um, I, think, I think I've updated them all now to where they're in the right order in the playlist, but they're you know, they might be referring to something that happened last week and it was going to be the next chapter or something like that. So, um, yeah, so that's uh, the, that book, again, very good. I've read pieces of it. I, I haven't worked with Shiny much since it came out, so I haven't gone back. That said, as you might know, I write Shiny things for this, for R4DS. And so one of these days I need to read this book and um, up my game a little bit. And likewise, um, kind of the next step from that is this engineering production grade shiny apps written by the the guys at Think R France and or the people at Think R France. Um, Colin Fay is uh, like the lead author on that. But Sebastian Rocher, Vincent uh, Guillaudar, and uh, Curvan or Servan Girard. Um, a few of them are active on R4DS, and it's great that they are because they are some of the foremost experts, I think, in Shiny. Um, and this book is all about like writing Shiny in ways that will work for the aerial scale for um, multiple people and that it's testable. It's a, it's a really uh, useful book. Again, it's a book that I've read paragraphs as I've need that needed them. I haven't read the whole book. And then I, I added here because um, the group that went through uh, engineering production grade shiny apps talked about maybe doing javascript for r um, i think there are a couple other options that are out there for just kind of more advanced topics it's an area that you can kind of infinitely scale on because um, there are some shiny apps that you can't tell are shiny um, they've been doing actually another thing that we might do is just kind of what viewing parties of um, jesse mustapak who actually founded r for ds works at our studio now and she's the shiny developer advocate and they do videos of um she as a non-expert sits with their shiny experts and they write code together and it's um, really cool and so that might be another way to do kind of a book club of just hey let's watch these videos together and discuss them um all right and then, like I said, uh, text analysis is a whole area that is going to almost definitely continue to expand because this is what I do at work. And so um, I'm a big fan of these books and we'll be pushing for more of them. Um, so 
Uh, I'm actually curious, since you're on the call, if you can speak, uh, Shamsuddin. So text mining with R is the older book and supervised machine learning for text analysis in R is newer. Are they both useful or would you, looking back now, would you have skipped? I don't know if you're able to speak or if you're even still there. Um, so we might have to wait and get that info later. Uh, text mining with R, it's by Julia Sogi and David Robinson. Um, it's probably five years old at this point, something like that. Um, it's a pretty short book, quick read, so I'm not sure it hurts to read both of them, but I'm not sure if it's necessary. Supervised machine learning for text analysis in R just came out uh, last year, I think. And um, yeah. that's, yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, so fortunately, um, uh, I led the these two books, uh, text mining with R and uh, supervised machine learning. I really enjoy them. And right now we are the last chapter for supervised machine learning for text analysis in R. And it's a really cool book and it really gives me more insight on other aspects of deep learning that I wasn't aware of. Um, yeah, so I really um, um, recommend this book. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, the text mining one, it, it's more of the um, analysis mm -hmm. over over modeling. Is that an yeah. accurate way? Yeah. So it's like getting getting information out of your text. Mm -hmm. And then um, Smoltar, Supervised Machine Learning for Text Analysis in R, uh, is actually building models, trying to predict things based on yeah. text. It's also uh, using um, tidy modeling. Uh, right. And deep learning. Um, Keras uh, with Keras and yeah yeah it's the wrong way to do it they should be they should update that to Torch because Torch is so much easier to work with but anyway um so uh this so it's like Emil uh since writing this book with Julia has started working at our studio and he is working on the the um text modeling side of the tidy modeling team so I expect we will be seeing uh more and more out of them. Um, I say, you know, big question mark here on others. To my knowledge, there aren't any other good, or just not even good, just any other um, text books for, uh, or, or books on text in R. There is a torch book in the works. That one will go into the, or into the modeling section at some point, but it's, uh, they, um, made the repo private. It was public for a little while and they hid it. So I think, I mean, that might mean that she got a publisher, but hopefully they're not, you know, hopefully it'll still be public once they get to a point where they're confident or comfortable with it being public. I think it probably will be free online because it's being written by people at our studio and that's kind of how our studio operates. Um, if that book, well, Pretty much no matter what, I do feel like um, I want to try for Jonathan and I to put together a little mini book, a blog post, something about um, using Torch for text analysis in R because number one, Torch is so much easier to work with. It's way easier to install uh, than, than TensorFlow and it's what we work with and uh, like it, well, we, we are writing the piece of it that is specifically for text analysis, and I want more people to use it so they can help us. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know of any other other existing books right now. All right, next, uh, data visualization. We have the one club that's reading ggplot2. Um, the cover there is for the second edition. Technically, I believe you're reading the third edition that's being developed online. Um, that's it right now, other than like shiny kind of counts as data visualization. I assume, I would be surprised if we don't have more books in the data visualization area at some point. There are many out there and, you know, it's a wide area um, to talk about not the ggplot2 specific things, but kind of the just um, best practices in data visualization. I could see that being something. Um, but again, you know, this book, uh, the newest edition 
it's by again, you know, it's still Hadley Wickham, but with Danielle Navarro and Thomas Lynn Peterson. Um, Thomas does is like the lead dev on ggplot2 now, so um, there's been lots of room for expansion there. Well, do you know how uh, far into the book the club is at? Uh, you're almost done, aren't you, Federica, for the ggplot2 club? Yeah, yeah, we, we missed the, 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 last, uh, the last part, which is deprogramming on ggplot2. Mm, yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing yeah. a new one might start. Yeah, very likely. Um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and if not, all the you know all the videos are available for the whole book, so or mm, almost for the true, whole book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's always better to have a club to work with. So yes, better uh, accountability that way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, and then so finally, I I put one book in here that doesn't really have any. Um, uh group any books to go with it but uh, as an example of others because there are very uh like specific books in the r universe that are out there data science and education using r is an example it was written um by ryan estriato emily freer jesse mustapak josh rosenberg and isabella velasquez um like this one was really cool because isabella actually participated in the club i think she might have i don't think she technically facil facilitated the club but whatever she helped run the club um yeah data science at the command line um is one that is in the chat that's one that's definitely going to be coming um and i'm working on uh, a process to make it easier to get club club started because right now i have to be involved in several steps of it and it's hard to do that um but we're working on it. Oh, but I did want to say, you know, Isabella has been very active in our clubs and Jesse uh, founded uh, R4DS and Josh uh, came into at least one of the uh, meetings for the data science book club. It's cool when we're able to do that. We've had um, chats with Hadley a couple of times. Um, I would love to get Jenny Bryan in for one of the groups that's reading one of her books. Um, kind of separate from the book clubs, but it's really fun to, to kind of see under the hood of what were they thinking. Um, so Isabella being active within the group was pretty cool. And that, that video or that series of videos is nice to go look at. Um, there's also, and again, this is linked in the slide deck, the big book of R uh, is a project by um, Oscar, was it Oscar Barufa? Um, and it's just a collection of all of the books that are related to R, plus some other things like R for DS uh, community is mentioned in there. Um, there's about 250 books the last time he compiled the list. Uh, it's, um, there are so many things out there. So, uh, you know, find things like data science at the command line, which I'm sure is in the big book of R, put in book, book club requests. I think that one technically might already have a thread in book club requests, but resurrect it if I uh, have forgotten about it. Um, especially if you volunteer to facilitate a club, it almost certainly is going to happen. I, I'll do a little bit of vetting to make sure, you know, again, that it's free and that there are enough people interested. Um, but uh, that's basically all. And then it's just a matter of finding time to get it up on the, the queue. Um, you can also watch Book Club Announce. We'll announce there when there are new clubs starting, like the ISLR sign up that went up this morning. And then we've written this app, or I, well, uh, Priyanka and I wrote this app that uh, lets you sign up and it links to your uh, R4DS login. And so I can keep track of who is actually signing up. Um, and then message you when it's time, say, hey, you signed up and it's, uh, you know, it's going to be at this time that you chose. So um, that is part of a path towards trying to make this more automated because eventually um, for the books that we have on the approved list, uh, you'll be able to just say, oh, I want to facilitate this and it'll launch a new club basically. So uh, coming, I don't know if I can say coming soon, but coming eventually. Um, Oh, and another thing to mention here is that um, for my team at uh, Macmillan Learning, we actually do these book clubs that the ISLR club that I'm in on Tuesdays is 
like professional development that we do as part of our job. So we take an hour for the club every week, and we also take about an hour of time, maybe two, to write the learning objectives for that club. Um, and that's something that we do, you know, pretty much all the time. We did uh, a stats book before that, but I'm, it's a stats book that we retired because it's not free online. Um, we did, uh, actually, I guess that's all we did for the two of us, but we, you know, we plan to do all the textbook, um, text analysis books, but we're gonna take a little break for the next month or so um, after we finish ISLR. All right, so you know, if you want more info, you guys know how to find me. Um, come to r 4 slash join if anyone wants to join the community. Um, if you ever try to use that link for anyone watching this video and it doesn't work, please leave a comment on the video because that is supposed to never expire. Slack says that that link never expires and every couple of months I have to refresh it because it actually expires. Um, so yeah. And then you can also comment, uh, contact us on Twitter, our PDS community. I'm John the Geek on Twitter. We have the Tidy Tuesday hashtag. We have Gmail, our for, our for data side at Gmail. And um, you can find this club, this deck at uh, our prds.io slash club deck. All right. Anyone have any comments, questions, anything? Uh, yeah, I have a question. So, what's the difference between ISLR and the modern dive? ISLR, so despite the um, stats in the name, it is a modeling book, not a statistics book. It is a modeling oh, book okay. written by statisticians. Um, so it's statistical learning is the statistician name for machine learning. Um, oh. Yes. Okay. It took me, when I first heard about the book, I was like, that's a weird way of saying an introduction to statistics is no they mean machine learning um and so it goes through all the types of models it, it's basically what it's about and um from a from a statistical, statistical standpoint of like you know what are the limitations and that kind of thing it's an easier or a i don't know a slightly shallower uh, dive into that world than, um, was it essentials of statistical learning, elements of statistical learning? I think it's elements. It's ESL was the book that ISL was kind of a, um, not to replace, but it's for a different level of course. Uh, so if, who knows, maybe eventually we'll do ESL, which is more like how to write um, models, like modeling software. I, I've never had, well, I say I've never had to, we're writing toward transformers, but I've never had to invent transformers. I've had to program transformers, but um, it's that kind of thing. Like if you're trying to invent new ways of doing modeling, that's what ESL is for. And we probably don't need that one, um, or I don't. Um, yeah, I don't think that I would. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so then the modern dive is maybe more just overall general statistics? Like yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. So it's um, again, I haven't actually read it, but it's more. My understanding is it's more focused on um, what you think of when you think of statistics. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, it's like a very um, introductory level education of statistics, or yeah, it's okay. like a very basic intro to statistics, along with a very basic intro to programming in R. So it's just, it's a really good intro book um, for both of those. Okay. That Every sense. once in a while, um, both of the authors at different times will be active on R4DS. So that's the other reason mm -hmm. that that one could be fun is um, if we start another cohort, we'll just ping, uh, I can't remember the Chester and Albert, I think are the authors. Um, Yes, anyway. Chester and Albert. Yeah. Uh, and maybe maybe they'll, you know, jump in and participate. So that's always fun to watch out for. Um, yeah, anything else? Any other questions? I see that Sham Sadin already uh, requested data science at the command line. So um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, 
I, I just heard you talking about transformers. So does yeah. that Torch has transformer implementation now? One can use Torch maybe through hugging face or what's, um, what, what do you mean by transformers um, in R? Uh, so trend, all of the trans, well, uh, the, the transformers are a um, deep learning framework or a deep learning, uh, I don't know if framework's quite the right word. Uh, more or less like um, architectures, architectures. Yeah, it's an architecture. There we go. Yeah. Framework, Torch should be the framework and then transformers are the thing that is implemented. Originally it was Torch. implemented in uh, 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 TensorFlow, but it then was quickly also implemented in PyTorch and PyTorch is actually just a wrapper on top of a C library torch, uh, sorry, libtorch. And then torch is an R package that is also a wrapper of that same C library. So anything that you can write in PyTorch, you can write in torch for R. So we're writing all the wrappers okay. within torch for R to, to make it easy to implement transformers um you could implement them from scratch that's basically what we're doing not i mean not from scratch from the code in torch um but it's all like it's all native r well native r plus underlying c code so you don't have to pipe it all through python and write python code in the middle um which makes life a lot easier <laughs> um that said it also like torch can save, uh, there's a compiler within Torch. And so you can compile the stuff that the models that you build in Torch and then run them anywhere. It doesn't matter whether it's something thinking of the Torch version or the Python version or the R version. Um, so yeah, one of these days, one of these days we'll write up uh, that missing piece because it's aggravating to read ISLR and um, SMLTAR, both of them stop at the point of where we got, God, it's four years ago now, I think, when text analysis or text, text modeling had a huge leap and transformers were the huge leap in text modeling and none of the books yeah. talk about it. Uh, and if you're doing anything from before transformers existed, you're doing like, it, it's worse. It just doesn't work as well. So um I'll, I'll try not to go off on this too much but it's it drives me crazy that, that both of the books stop before the good stuff um and so one of these days i'm gonna do i mean not a i don't think it's enough for a book but we'll write i mean we've got a couple of vignettes and we'll just basically do a book club of a mini book club a couple of yeah. a couple of wow. weeks <laughs> about uh the basics of how to work in in torch right. uh, with transformers that would be awesome thank you um if you really uh want i will um dig up the url and i'll share it in the channel i yeah. did a talk about um bert which is the big google framework that's uses transformers or the google arch architecture for text analysis um and the points about how it works are still valid the actual code in there i wouldn't use because that was our package that we started to make well we did write it and it wrapped um tensorflow and it was way harder to work with it, it was um sensitive to the version of tensorflow and it's just it's a that's way more painful we were we have since moved everything over to torch and i don't have a talk about that but i'll, I'll share the link to the talk that i did about um arbert which was the package we wrote to wrap bert with tensorflow um, it's still, it goes through the concept of transformers and all that is still valid. And then I'll just share a link to our package where you can come read, see what we're doing. It's not on CRAN yet. Uh, that is one of the reasons that we are not going to do a book club for a while is we have all of these things that are like almost done. And so we're going to try to get some of them done. Um, and that is one of the things that's on the list is get Torch Transformers uh, cleaned up enough to go on to CRAN. Um, it works. You could do any like any of the models in it, but it has an easy path that is the specific model that we needed. Um, and so, if you want to do, uh, actually, we've got two now. So, if you want to do the two things that we've done, doing it in Torch Transformers is easy. But if you want to do 
I don't know, kind of more normal um, text text modeling. It's probably not easy. Um, all right, so that's that's all the clubs. Uh, again, though, like Shamsuddin just did, if you have some other book you want to read, just request it. Um, I will recommend, and um, I'm going to ask Sh Sham the same thing in there. Is if you're volunteering to facilitate, it's way easier. So like, I don't have to do that much work. So if you really want to read a book, say, I will, I want to read this book and I want to run the club that reads this book. Um, and in that case, no problem. <laughs> if you aren't confident to do that step, then I've got to wait until someone volunteers to uh, run the club because, you know, I, someone's got to be in charge. Oh, uh, I should probably put this into the talk that I think the kind of our secret sauce, one of our pieces of secret sauce is someone is in charge of making sure the club happens. And uh, for the most part, the responsibility, like we don't enforce this or anything, but the idea is if no one volunteers, then you're presenting. Um, and that, that way the club keeps going and you don't have that many just dead weeks. Cause if you have two or three dead weeks, um, you know, we had the break for uh, spring forward other than that, if you just have a couple of weeks where, oh, no one's ready to present, we'll just skip. Usually that means the club's not going to happen anymore. So having someone take the responsibility of, okay, this club's starting to stall out. I'll present chapter 14. I don't really know anything about it, but whatever, we'll make it happen. I think that's part of what keeps the clubs going. Um, I don't know what else. Like Maya, uh, Maya Gans uh asked for the advanced r club in 2020 and kind of was the first facilitator um and she did a talk at our studio global last year the the interim um our studio conference that was all online about them and you know she has her um points about what why did it work but we're not sure why they do seem to work and I, I don't know like a lot of online book clubs fizzle out but ours for the most part make it through um we have definitely had some we had a little bit of a fizzle for the tidy modeling with our um cohorts one and two because they didn't finish the book in time <laughs> and we got sick of waiting for that last chapter to get done so we actually never did a meeting for the last chapter um so that can happen. And that, you know, that's a weird case that we've, I say it's a weird case, but we've done it many times. Uh, ggplot2 currently is reading the new version of the book that's not done yet. Um, all of the R packages clubs have been reading the new version of the book that's not actually done yet. Uh, Mastering Shiny started with the new version of the book. I don't know, I, I kind of like that because especially tidy modeling with R, Max and Julia were super active on our channel asking for advice of wait that was understood you know that was confusing how is would this be better things like that and so it's been really cool to kind of be able to work with the authors to make things make the book better but then also obviously that helps us understand things better if they're trying to work with us to explain it um yeah max actually watched all of the videos for the first cohort or two of tidy modeling with R to see uh what we you know what he was missing basically um yeah yeah i guess that that's very helpful for authors you know to get feedback on where people are having problems so yeah like that's why they all write the books in the open the way they do um mm -hmm. because then they get feedback as they go um yeah you know i'm sure well i don't know like there's the danger that it cuts into sales but uh, i buy all the books that i read to have to reference to be able to flip through when I want to. Um, also just to, you know, throw a few pennies to the author. Um, the other side of it is they don't make that much money off of the books. So there's that. Right. <laughs> I have, um, a, I guess, a question yeah. on facilitating. So is that mostly running the book club, you know, like the details and uh, keeping people on track and organizational things or does it require a certain level of expertise with a it specific book? Does not require any expertise whatsoever. Okay. You are you're reading the book along with the group. Um, like I said, you're kind of on the hook. If no one wants to present, then 
it's mm -hmm. you. But what that means is you bother people to present, and get right, you know, needle people to to volunteer. Um, Shamsuddin asked about another book, Applied Predictive Modeling. That's on the list, but there is a project to update that book to Tidy Models, and I'm waiting for um, Max to answer a question before we uh, start the the club for that, because. If he is actively trying to update that, he actually was interested in um, R4DS helping him update that. Um, and if he's still going to do that, then that would be what the book club does basically is it'll be an editing, editing club to go through and update the book as we go. Um, that, so that's a special case and we'll see. I, just give me another couple of weeks and we'll sort that one out. Um, yeah, so most clubs are not that. You're not going to be editing the book as you go, but uh, the more advanced the topic, the more I think that kind of thing is useful because that it, like, that's why I try to encourage everyone to work with um, presenting and ideally doing some of this updating of the slides and all that because it's where you learn. Um, there's a lot, a lot to get the deeper you dive into things. Um, I do want to start to try to enlist the shiny book clubs, for example, to work on some, our shiny apps. Um, that's the best way to learn is edit the, um, or, you know, actually have a project. So, all right. Anything else? If not, oops. Okay. Well, I will see you all, uh, on the Slack.